okay. So, the gain uh, coefficient for a semiconductor medium gets defined as gain is equal to I uh, will tell you what these constants are, but these are constants. It is proportional to n minus n naught, okay, where n is the carrier density, n naught is the carrier density to achieve material transparency. So, what does this mean, Mater material transparency? Again, I am repeating this diagram of valence band and uh, conduction band, the E k diagram. You could have absorptions in the system, which means the incident photon, it is not necessary that the incident photon is always causing stimulated emission. The incident photon can cause an absorption and it can cause an emission only if the carrier density is in the upper state is larger than the carrier density in the lower state. If the carrier density is larger in the lower state, the probability of absorption is more. Okay. And so, what it depends on is n minus n naught, where n, n naught is a carrier density that is required to achieve transparency. Transparency is a condition where your all the incident photons are coming out at the same number. There is no absorption. This is a no absorption condition, the carrier density required for no absorption condition. Okay. So, as you keep on injecting more and more carriers, more carrier density is present in the system and there is a certain amount of carrier density that is required to kind of compensate for the absorption in the system. And that carrier density is not available to you for creating stimulated emission. Only the excess is available for creating stimulated emission and that is why you have this n minus n naught. Hmm? So, the gain coefficient is proportional to this n minus n naught and the proportionality constant has this constant a, that proportionality constant, we also know that the gain coefficient, the rate of stimulus, uh, spontaneous emission, we said that it is also a wavelength dependent, a frequency dependent uh, phenomena, because it is not necessary that all the frequencies above the band gap, frequencies h nu naught greater than the band gap is emitted. Uh, it also depends on the population, uh, the density of states, and the probability of occupation and so on. So, there is a lambda dependence, right. So, that lambda dependence is contained in this A. This A is that gain coefficient, right. Uh, so, there are two gain coefficients we are defining here. This gain coefficient is nipper per meter, which is in the form E g, where I am going to use this g uh, in the exponent, right. This proportionality constant is also called as a gain coefficient because your gain is proportional to n minus n naught and the constant is your gain coefficient, right. But this is in meter square. Why this is in meter square? Because n is in per meter cube. So, this n is in meter cube, which is meter raised to minus 3. Multiply it with uh, meter square, you will get this, this quantity in per meter. And what is this gamma now? Gamma is a dimensionless number. It is a number that is between 0 and 1 and that is called the confinement factor. Now, what does this confinement factor indicate? You know that in your semiconductor structure, we discussed last time that we do double heterostructure, which will allow uh, guidance of optical light. Now, whenever you have guidance, we will do in fiber optics uh, later that whenever you have confinement of light, uh, the transverse distribution of light is going to look like a Gaussian, right. So, if this is the emitting region, okay, that is a region, the junction region where all these emissions are happening, this region has a higher refractive index when compared to, so if this is N1 and this is N2, because of the fact that the band gaps you adjusted it such that you are having carrier confinement. The consequence of carrier confinement was also that there was an index contrast. The, the light is emitted in a region where the refractive index N1 is greater than the surrounding refractive index. So, that gives rise to a condition favorable for total internal reflection and guidance inside the uh, confined region. And if you solve the boundary conditions uh, you solve the Maxwell's wave equations with the boundary conditions, you will realize that the transverse distribution of the electric field of the light that can be confined is 
the fundamental mode of that is a Gaussian. We will talk about why this is a Gaussian later when we do fiber optics. But the point we are trying to make is that it means that the entire cross section, so which means that the entire cross section is not available for this process providing gain because light is available only in a region which is maybe area. So, if I, if I draw this uh, 90 degree shifted turned, you know that the Gaussian, the Gaussian profile could maybe something like this. It means that the entire area of cross section is not available for this process. There is only a fraction of the available area of cross section which is covered by your Gaussian mode and only that area is participating in the whole process. Whereas, when you did, when you wrote n minus n naught, it is carrier density, carrier density is carrier per unit volume. So, you assume that the entire cross section is having this process, but that is not happening and so to correct for that, you have this gamma which is a number which is less than 1 and how does one calculate gamma? You take the area of cross section of the mode divided by area of cross section of the junction region. Okay. So, this gamma is nothing but cross sectional area of the optical mode divided by cross section of the junction in a double heterostructure uh, device. At the moment you do not know how to calculate the cross section area of the mode, we will reserve that when we are trying to do the uh, optical uh, fiber transverse mode discussion. But you understand that this is a number which is less than uh, 1. So, the question is what is, uh, is A called emission cross section. So, A is not, A is dependent on emission cross section. Uh, but A is not the emission cross section. For example, this is semiconductors, uh, especially uh, in a photonics course, you would have probably talked about uh, erbium doped fiber uh, emitting structures. So, those structures in a given, uh, what, what you define there is an emission cross section and an absorption cross section. So, the A will get defined as the effective uh, emission cross section, which means it will have n2 times the emission minus n1 times the absorption, but then you do not do n minus n naught there. right? So, this is slightly different, but the idea is the same. Okay? You can call this in that sense as not gain coefficient, you could call this as gain cross section if you may, because it is in meter square. All right. So, this is what defines your gain and we will, we will need this relation again and again today. Uh, so, that is why uh, we is spending a little time on understanding what this gain is. And one thing you need to understand is there are different ways one defines gain or loss in general. Uh, if I say that uh, my output, see for instance in this case I had A naught as my input, my output is A naught times e power 2 g d, you are explaining, you are, you are representing the field got amplified. Right? And this is the gain coefficient when you say gain. So, this is gain coefficient and this unit of this is nepper per meter. Per meter cancels exponential nepper is a dimensionless number. Okay? But the same thing if you want to explain it as uh, amplification in intensity or amplification in power, how do you represent that as? You would say P naught amplification in photon number, photon number is proportional to intensity, intensity is proportional to power. So, whether it is power, intensity or photon number, all three of them, if you were to represent, if P naught is my initial photon number or intensity or power, all of them will have the same uh, kind of relation. If P naught is the initial one, after one round trip, how do you explain its uh, uh, gain as, what would the gain be? P naught is equal to, sorry, P is equal to after one round trip, it will be P naught exponential. If the amplitude gain is 2 GD, the power gain would be or intensity gain is proportional to the square of the amplitude. So, it will be 4. Okay. Then you also represent gain or loss as a ratio of the powers. 
if p if this is called as power p1 this is called as power p2 you can also represent it as a logarithmic as a ratio so you represent the gain g as uh, gain as i will not use g again because g we will use for something else gain in decibels as p2 divided by p1 uh, well if you are doing it in decibel it is not just p2 by p1 it should be 10 log p2 divided by p1 this is a decibel gain so we talked about decibel gain gain coefficient which is in nipper per meter which will get converted into amplitude now this two factor came because the distance is 2d okay and uh, gain in power the corresponding relation is this so you have to keep all this terminology in mind